We are here at Printed Solid once again. If you guys don't remember, we went last year, which we'll card to, but hey, we're gonna do another tour of the facility, show you guys what's new, show you guys what's a little bit different, and uh, if you stay tuned to a future video, we're going to really get into the nitty gritty of how filament is made. We are standing in the showroom for Printed Solid, which you might remember was recently acquired by Prusa Research. And that's actually why we have some of the Trilab printers sitting here, which is a company within the Prusa umbrella. We also go forward and have custom Printed Solid rep boxes, the enclosures that Printed Solid offers, all the way over to things like Vorons. There's a 2.4, a V0. We got a Prusa Mini, which did recently get that alpha input shaper firmware. Have you guys used it? Do you want to see a video on it? Let me know in those comments below. We got the Mark IV and the Mark III, which it's really cool to see them next to each other. It's not often you get, uh, you know, the older generation and the newer generation standing right next to each other. And it's, it is very much same, same, but a little bit different. It's kind of what I like about it. It's, it's consistent. We have another MK3, but this one is running an MMU. That way, if you want to do multicolor, multi-material, there's that. And the new MMU3 on an MK3 as well. Further forward, we have the station where I'm uploading content to our editor because we have to get videos out. So thanks, uh, Dave, for the internet. We have the SL1S Speed, the CW1S. We have the awesome Prusa enclosure, which can hold one full Joseph, including some more. These enclosures are uh, pretty beefy. It, it's making noise because there's a plastic part on it. Nice and beefy, all steel enclosures. And then the printer that everybody has been talking about, everyone loves to see the XL. So we got a dual tool head and a single tool head XL here with uh, a pretty ridiculous print. This thing is so heavy, but it's all vase mode. Uh, this was done for the East Coast Rep Rap Fest. If you missed that coverage, card to that playlist so you guys can take a look as well. We just got done with the East Coast Rep Rap Fest 2023. We have some awesome colors of the Jesse line here. We're going to be showing you guys the new PS Imports brand and uh, some elixir as well. It's going to but we got all the awesome colors of Jesse as well as some of the PETGs up on the top row. So if you are looking for awesome made in the USA filament, hit up Printed Solid. Links are in that description down below. But the awesome wall full of really cool custom parts that they use just to kind of show off the colors, show off the materials, everything from Hope to a model that Geek Toy Box made way up on the top shelf there. And even some old school parts here, like this dinosaur that I, I actually have the real dinosaur for this, which is just always funny to me that I have this actual dinosaur. It was made in the 80s. Uh, this is made in the old Polyalchemy Elixir. And this one was made on a belt printer, which is pretty cool because there is no support needed for this model on a belt printer. But you all don't want to just see normal models. You don't want to just see parts sitting on shelves. You could see that at your own house. We, uh, we gotta go on a tour. Come on, come along. Come on. We are here in the extrusion line where it feels like I'm back in Florida. We got PETG here. We got PLA on the other side and, uh, ooh, it's a little toasty over here, okay? Because we have hundreds of amps of heaters all back here it even says danger hot surface don't touch and i am smarter than i look i promise the filament comes out goes into this water bath where it is for a short amount of time technically wet filament and as it goes through and cools down it gets the dimensionality the tension is pulled appropriately and then it is spooled but there's a really cool process that happens between the extrusion and the spooling. We not only have the three axis laser measuring, but you also have the accumulator, which runs down this really long steel track that actually allows the filament to still be fed out during a spool change. This is done so you can keep constant tension and maintain dimensional accuracy when and where you need it for your filament. But there is a lot more to this. Let's, let's get in between the machines and take a real close look at what's going on. Here we have the two actual extrusion machines. And the first step that you need to do is literally step up. 
and dump the filament in. In this machine here, we have Purple Eater, which is a Jesse PLA. And over here, we have PS Red or Printed Solid Red with PETG. That's right, these are completely separate lines. That ensures that your material doesn't have any contamination. Those of you that deal with single tool head, multicolor extrusion systems know that you need a big purge block so that you can make sure that you're purging between materials or colors. Well, when you make filament for a living, you don't exactly have the ability to just constantly change over and over and over again. So you buy separate extrusion lines. The cool thing about the PLA one though, is that the water bath is completely open. So you can see the entire process from when it comes out as forbidden purple goo, all the way to where it starts to resemble real filament. And if I got my timing right, we're gonna see this accumulator start to move in just a second. I don't wanna get too close because it gets really loud, but we've got some air dryers right here that blow all that excess water away from the filament itself before it goes into the laser measuring system. And with that noise, whether or not the camera picked it up or not, this accumulator starts rolling and Heather, who is behind the camera, starts and makes that next spool ready for you. We can see here that the accumulator, as the name would state, accumulates extra material. And this is done to ensure that you have constant tension on the filament and ensure that dimensional accuracy, which is here on this screen, is met at the same time. Once the roll actually starts to move, this accumulator will slowly start to go back. And if you are wondering, Grant, what happens if it goes all the way to the end? The answer is you don't wanna know. Uh, it makes a big mess because eventually you run out of tension that could possibly be held. Now, thankfully, that's not a common place, but hey, accidents do happen. I kind of want to see it happen, but I don't want to deal with the mess, so I'm not going to not gonna ask Dave. This is a really cool system, and it ensures the filament is pretty much the same, no matter where you get it from. And now we have the PETG going, and they're off to the races. We see Red is pulling out ahead of Purple. They are moving toward the finish line. Can Heather get it done in time? We will see. <laughs> it's a ton of time. Like, this is a couple of minutes worth of time to go all the way down the line. But it is really cool to see something like this because it's just a cool mechanical thing, right? But see, I, I'm not an expert in this kind of thing. Heather is. Heather has been doing the spooling here at Printed Solid for a little bit, and she's actually behind the camera working. So let's talk with Heather and get her opinions on some of the filament that is made here at Printed Solid. We got Heather, who has been here at Printed Solid for about three years, who's currently keeping watch over the extrusion line. Heather, talk to us about what it's like to run two extrusion lines all day. How awesome is this? Uh, it's awesome. I really love it here. I've been here for almost three years now and I enjoy every minute of it. I enjoy the downtime in between spools. So that way I get a little bit of a break in between that. And then as soon as the spool gets off, it's just a quick changeover. And then I restart and then I can go back to relaxing. How long does it take to get a full kilogram spool? It takes about five to seven minutes. So that means you're get, you're making a lot of filament in a day. Like there's some filament yes. back here. How is this? Is this been so far today? So so far today, this is our stock for the day. I should have about a few more here and a few more there. But yeah, plus or minus. Nice. So we have the purple eater in PLA and the PS red in PETG, right? Correct. Very cool. What is your favorite part about running the the, the extrusion lines here? I named them. Okay. So I name? named this one Sheila. Sheila. And this one Simon. Simon. Simon seems to be a little more noisier than Sheila is. So I get, I really like Sheila a lot more. When okay. we just run the one machine, it's really nice downtime in here. So I enjoy it a lot. But when we run both of them, it gets a little kind of iffy, if, especially if we don't time the spools up just right, then we'll have to get up in between those. Yeah. So kind of up, down, up, down. You want them at the same time, yeah, basically. You get maybe, them... maybe 30, 40 seconds apart. Exactly. Is the extrusion rate roughly the same on the machines? Yes. Okay. So you'll have a little bit of difference. Like Sheila likes to run a little slower. Mm -hmm. Simon likes to run a little faster. So at some point, Simon's going to overtake Sheila. Yep. Okay. Eventually. That's cool. Now, where do the names come from? I got to know. Um, I watched a movie one day and I really liked the name Sheila. Uh -huh. So I picked Sheila. And then Simon, because I'm, uh, I watched this Tinder show 
um, the Tinder Swindler. Okay. And nobody really likes him, so I named that one. So oh, I oh, okay. So there, there's a history <laughs> here. There's a history here. We asked last year, I asked you the same question. What is your favorite color to make and what is your least favorite color to My make? My favorite color to make is Brad's orange. Got I love, love the glitter inside of it. It's orange is my favorite color. And my least favorite color is army green. I don't really see too much, like for me personally, uh -huh. in army green. So it's just not my favorite color. Army green's one of the new colors. I don't have any of that yet. Maybe we can uh, Try you know, to change put my some mind. in the back pocket. No, I'm gonna take some home with me. <laughs> well, Heather, what is your favorite color that is not orange? Like, what is your favorite color just extrude? I love the purple eater. Purple eater? I think of it as like, I'm a huge Little Mermaid fan, so it reminds me of Ursula. Nice. And with that, you gotta get to work. Yep. All, All right. right. Let's see the spool change that happen in real time. And there you go. And just like that, it's done. Just like that, it's Like you've over. been doing this for a couple of years, huh? <laughs> it's like you know what you're doing. Very easy, this very is, easy. That's really cool. Heather, thank you so much thank for showing you. us this. Awesome, it was great meeting you. Likewise, I appreciate it. Anything you want to say to the folks at home? Hi, everybody. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go take a look at the actual process, the colors that make the actual filament itself, because it's way different than what we saw last year. Here at the color storage and, you know, boxes, we have all the colors for printed solid filament in these drums. Last year when we were here at Printed Solid, we saw the wall of or dog food containers full of the actual colorant material for the filament. And it's pretty cool to see them getting larger barrels because you know what that means, more filament fast. And in fact, there's a third extrusion line that you guys haven't even seen yet. See the really awesome thing about this new third extrusion line, which, you know, by the way, coming soon in a future video where we take a look deep into an extrusion line that isn't running so I don't burn and hurt myself. We can see that Elixir coming soon TM. Stay tuned because uh, we have an exclusive coming right at you guys where we are going to make our own custom color of Elixir and uh, if it looks good, you might actually find it for sale at Printed Sol, but check out these samples. And if you are subscribed to the Jesse Filament subscription box, you've actually had some samples of Elixir come out. So uh, if you aren't subscribed, why not? And when you're subscribing to their mystery box, you should subscribe to this channel and leave a like. But I'm excited all about film, but we've just kind of seen it in the process. You can't hold a business when you're always out of stock. So you gotta have a big inventory system to make sure that when orders come in, they fly off the shelves nice and fast. So let's go see how much inventory you have to have to have a business like printed solid. <laughs> Here we are in the filament warehouse and it takes quite a bit to, you know, hold some inventory here. But you might be like, Grant, some of these shelves look a little barren. You might be right, because Printed Solid brought over 1,500 spools to the East Coast Rep Rap Festival, which just finished yesterday. And this is what's left over. Stuff that they had to keep here for orders, as well as some small amount of inventory while they go ahead and work the lines over time to refill it. Normally, these shelves are packed floor to quite a bit above my head level with filament of various colors. But you see, there's some of it that are in bags, like this limer green right here. But there's also some of it that's in boxes, like this silk magic color filament. This is PS Imports. This is what white labeling actually looks like, where Print Solid is being very clear upfront that they're not making this. This is actually an imported filament from China, and this allows them to carry more colors for you guys so you can shop at one particular location rather than having to go to different vendors. Printed Solid realized that there's no point in trying to get all these different extrusion lines for things like 
you know, dual color and tri-color and rainbow and matte and shiny. There, there's a lot of extra detail that goes into different types of filament. So they decided, let's just buy it from somebody else. That's the right move, I think, especially when you're building a business because, uh, you know, this right here is shiny gradient filament. This requires its own system and is a lot more complicated than you might think. You have to get the right dosing mechanisms to get the colorant into the filament at the right time. But the machines out there don't. I'm told that Prinzalo just got one that can. So I'm gonna do a little bit of shopping here because um, your boy really likes filament. Couple of these. You know what? Let me see if Domingo's available. A few moments later. One of these. One of those. Yeah, one of one of those. Ooh, neon pink. Oh. Oh. I'll take two of those. Yeah, limer green. That's good. That's good. Mystery, mystery orange. Yeah. Uh huh. Ooh, gold winter glitter. Yeah. I'm feeling like One of my, one of my, one of my favorite colors. But hey, you know what, Domingo? Honestly, let's just, just one of everything. I've only got two arms. It's so yeah, but much it, filament. It, 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 it's free shipping over fifty bucks. Oh. We're gonna need a bigger box. Come on. Come on, I'm the one with the bad back. Come on. <laughs> Me too, man. Ugh. You guys just saw all the stock of Jesse and PS Imports, but here's the stock of Prusa Mint. Remember, the printed solid is actually owned by Prusa Research, and that means that they stock all the fun flavors like Army Green, for reference, or Jet Black, Yellow Gold, and Opal Green, one of Amber's favorite colors. It is really awesome to get to see the process, but there's some machinery back here that we still have to check out. And in an upcoming video, you guys are gonna join myself and David Randolph himself, president of Printed Solid, and we're gonna show you what a filament extrusion line actually looks like with some really cool upgrades on this thing. The extrusion line behind me was delivered just a few days ago. So it's really cool to be able to see it before it gets all hooked up and running to where we can actually pull the covers off and show you guys how these machines actually work. So stay tuned for that video if you're excited to see how filament is made. And I'm told we're gonna be going through the entire process to make elixir. Yes, the old polyalchemy elixir is now Jesse's elixir. So stay tuned. Let me know what color you guys think it's gonna be in those comments below because uh, it's going to be an awesome one, one that will be for sale very soon in Printed Solid Store. So stay tuned for that video and what's going to come after it. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for coming out. And a huge thank you goes to all of our channel supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. If you want to see our tour last year of Printed Solid, it's right below me. And hey, right next to that is our coverage of the East Coast Rap Rap Festival 2023. Check them out. I think you'll enjoy it. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, leave a like, get subscribed, and keep making awesome. Have a good one. They are rocking out out there. <laughs> Costume change. Forky McForkface.